for this adventure, we're jetting off to Kodiak Island. Our ride? A float plane dropping us off on a secluded river on the island's southern half. Then, we're in for a week-long thrill ride, rafting 27 miles downstream to our rendezvous point. Along the way, we'll reel in some legendary native steelhead, track down a Sitka black-tailed deer or two, and here's the kicker. I've got a prized Kodiak bear tag burning a hole in my pocket. My mission? Bag a bear with my bow or bust. Spanning over 3,500 square miles, Kodiak is the hidden gem in the Gulf of Alaska and is home to around 13,000 folks, mostly in the town of Kodiak. The shores of the island you can find a plethora of sea life, including sea otters, harbor seals, and sea lions, and of course, birds of prey. And let's not forget about the rivers. They're teeming with salmon, including sockeye, chinook, pink, and coho. These fish make a splash every year, drawing in anglers and of course, some serious predators like the legendary Kodiak bears. Speaking of which, Kodiak bears are the real deal. They're the kings of the island, and for good reason. Thanks to isolation and plenty of grub, these bears are colossal, the largest land carnivores in North America. But it's not just about the size. These bears have a rich history too. For centuries, they've been part of the Alunic people's lives, shaping traditions and culture. They say when you look into the eye of the bear, even for a second, you can feel them staring into your soul. And for that moment, the world goes quiet. When we arrived in Kodiak, we headed to the local fishing game office where I could pick up my coveted Kodiak bear tag. From there, we headed straight down to Island Air Service to pack up our gear and get ready to fly out. Well, we were supposed to fly out today, but unfortunately the weather's kind of a little nasty. Not really that it's socked in, but the wind's picking up. So we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow, but it's kind of a good thing because we had to go through all of our bags, cut out a bunch of stuff. Uh, we were about 150 pounds too heavy, so cut out a bunch of stuff. Unfortunately, the things that got cut off were the creature comforts, the big buddy heater, the propane, chairs, pancakes, and some extra clothes. All of our cases got cut out, so we are going in light and style. Got a couple more beds. Lubby here. We gotta just cut him out and then we would have been able to bring all the stuff. I just leave him behind. Taxi's here. One more night in Kodiak. I suggest if you ever head to Kodiak and get socked in for a couple days to head to the airport and rent a car. It didn't take us long and we found some bears right next to the road while we were on our drive. If you do go on a drive, make sure you have a nice camera and don't forget to bring your SD chip like me. So I had to record these guys from my phone instead of my nice camera. Look to be a sow and maybe a couple two year old cubs. I'm sure they're not going to be with mama for much longer.
win. Well, we made it. Rainy, foggy in Kodiak. Beautiful out here on the river. What'd you think about that, Lubby? Life changing. <laughs> Life changing. That's that's Lub's. Uh, that's Lub. What's that? Yeah. All right, I gotta get to work. No more talking. We are all loaded up and we're ready to push off. Everybody? Yep. Let's go! So we are finally on the river. It's been, we we're supposed to be out here Saturday. Today's Monday the 30th. Tomorrow is Halloween. But we finally made it out here. It's actually really beautiful here and on the river, but in Kodiak, we were, it was really foggy, rainy and windy. As soon as we came around the corner to this uh, south side, it's beautiful. So we're gonna make our way, first camp's about five miles down the river. And uh, we'll set up camp, spend a few days catching some fish and looking for some bears, looking for some deer. So wish us luck. so far buddy. Yeah. Now we're cooking by it. Uh, scooters. Walking our dog down the river. That's a beautiful fish though, buddy. Good job, buddy. Well, that's our first morning out here. We got a couple dozers spotted. We're still uh, peeking around, looking for a 
bear. Anything a little bit closer it does. Our camps down there. We'll climb this ridge behind camp and I'm kind of glass on the river for bears. Yeah, it hit him. Yep. He's gone. Little Levy just shot this buck. Fell into the brush. And we're gonna go track it. See if we can find him. It's a nice buck. Look, I got three points. We've been watching him all morning. To the spotting scope. Then we decided just to make a move. Got within a couple hundred yards. Love made a couple of good shots on him. Bag. Yeah. It's a nice buck, buddy. Huh? Nice buck. Well, we're packing out. Loves deer. We got a ways to go. We just kept climbing and climbing. Found this nice buck. Love made a good shot. I'm all quartered up and heading back to camp. Camp is, you can see the river right there, so it's up in the over at the top of that. We got a ways. stay put or work his way this way and we'll get a shot as we were watching this first bear feed up and over the mountain we caught a glimpse of a second bear working the river just down from camp and we knew we had to get down the mountain in a hurry so we could make a stock
bear come this morning and it was not quite what we were looking for. So head back to camp and make some steelhead and some tender for lunch. So, productive morning. Not really. You saw that it was small as soon as you got eyes on it. Yeah. And I was like, ah, what if this is my only chance? It's, I hate those feelings. It's like God's giving me a little gift right here next to camp, along the shore, like I wanted. And I tell I tell him no. Be patient. Like a big old fish. Silver? Oh yeah. Beauty. Well, it's day three of hunting. Only got like three or four more days left. And that's including packing up camp and floating 15 more miles down the river. So we don't have a ton of time left. We have got shorted two days because of weather and Kodiak for us to get out here. This land up here has been it's actually owned by a native corporation. You have to pay to, to come out here fishing or hunting. But the good thing about that is the land is virtually untouched for the last thousands of years. It's pretty cool to just see a preserved land unmolested by the hands of man. It feels pretty pure to be out here a part of it so if you do come out here you have to take care of it pick up after yourself not disrupt the land keep it pristine Oh, oh yeah, you don't have a gun. Okay, let's spray. Yeah, let's spray. Yeah, just keep your favorite child. No weapon.
sound like a good shot. You go far, so far. One, two, three. You know, just this. Well, we finally found her. We thought she gave us the slip. She wasn't bleeding too bad or too good, but wasn't a bad shot. Right behind the shoulder there. But she ran probably, I don't know, 500 yards or 400 yards for Sitka. With the bow, called it in. It's a pretty fun morning. Say 30 foot. I, if I lived in a world where there was a 30 foot bear, I wouldn't want to live <laughs> in that world. That's huge. That that's big. bigger that's bigger than my boat. Right out of the woods, back strap. made it to the lagoon where we were supposed to meet the pilot in a couple days. Just in time before big storm blew in and the temperatures dropped into the single digits. Well, I woke up and the lagoon's frozen. So we got a trek to the village about two miles that way. Progress. Hopefully they 
get to Carlock, which is about two miles. That way. Finally broke through the ice, took us four hours to get from over there to here. And it's completely iced in. Shit. Well, I guess we're not getting out of here today. <laughs> Thank goodness we made it to this fish shack. We're gonna hold up there for the night. We went 200 yards in six hours. <laughs> Well, we got stuck in the crossing the lagoon. We got this nice ADFG cabin across the other side once we broke through all the ice. Show you around. We've got couches, nice oven, a little wood stove, I guess heat or fuel stove. Any snacks you want? Power, electricity. It's got bedrooms. Got some beds. Upstairs got three bedrooms. But well, we're living like kings, huh, boys? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I've been. It's been worse. Very much. Since the lagoon was frozen, we had a hike to the village to get picked up by a wheeled plane. Well, we made it to a road. We got a ride. Down to the village. Let's get the heck off this island. Oh, what a fun adventure. So we say goodbye to Kodiak Island, and we do it with grateful hearts for the chance to explore its wild side with the memories that will stick with us forever. <laughs>